Okie dokie. In this problem, we are given a function. 2 to the x over x to the 7th. And the goal is to identify f prime, the derivative of this function. In this case, where we have an x term being divided by another x term, is where we have to use something known as the quotient rule. So go ahead and take a screenshot or picture, write this down in your notes, whatever. This is the quotient rule, representing the numerator as a and the denominator as b. So again, we use this when we see a function that has x terms being divided by other x terms, and we have to take its derivative. So in this case, again, our a is our numerator, b is the denominator. So finding the derivative, all we need is a prime times b minus a times b prime all over b squared, right? So we can kind of just go ahead and set up this format for any problem where we have to use quotient rule. And let's start plugging in what we know. Let's start with b. Let's start with b and a and b that go in those places respectively. So we will have x to the seventh as our b. Two to the x is our a and b again is x to the seventh. So now we just need a prime here and b prime here. We're already, you know, over halfway done. So let's just fill in the missing pieces. A prime, the derivative of two to the x is two to the x times natural log of two. Again, that just follows the exponential rules for, uh, or like the derivative rules for exponential functions. And then b prime is the derivative of x to the seventh, which is seven x to the sixth. So we are done. This is the whole thing using the quotient rule. So usually a good thing to check for first is does the denominator have b squared? And it looks like all of them do have b squared. So can't eliminate any just based on that. Next thing to check, let's go ahead and check are these two terms paired together? 2 to the x, ln of 2, and x to the 7th. 2 to the x, ln of 2, x to the 7th. 2 to the x, ln of 2, x to the 7th. All right. Uh, 2 to the x minus 1 will never be the case with exponential functions, meaning we can cancel that. Same here. And then 2 to the x, ln of 2, x to the 7th. Okay. So, looks like... A, B, and E are okay so far. Now, let's check for the subtraction sign. Subtraction, subtraction. Oh, look at that. Addition. Just based on that, we can cancel option E. The only situation where they might actually have the addition sign as a correct answer would be if one of our derivatives had a negative on it or one of our terms was negative. So for example, let's say we had negative 2 to the x here instead. They might combine both of these to create a positive or to change the operation from subtraction to addition. But in this case, there's no need to negate a negative since there is no negative here. So looking at our options, of course, we see 7x to the 6th right away so that tells us a is our answer so this is kind of an intro to quotient rule now let's do a couple more examples much faster jumping right into it we always start quotient rule and product rule with a prime just to simplify it for us product rule really you could start with any of those terms since it's separated by addition but keep in mind quotient rule the order matters we must start with a prime times b first or b times a prime but this pair first regardless so stop wasting time let's jump right into a prime first a prime is the derivative of a which is the numerator so co uh, sine has a derivative of cosine of x b is next so we have 3 minus x to the fourth a is sine of x 
b prime is the derivative of 3 minus x to the fourth, negative 4x cubed. And then b on the bottom, 3 minus x to the fourth squared. So, again, oftentimes it's helpful to look for b squared on the bottom, but it looks like all of these have b squared in its in their denominator. So, it doesn't really help us, but we do want cosine of x paired with 3 minus x to the fourth. We see it here. We don't see it here because there's a negative, so b is off the table. We see it here. We don't see it here because there's a negative, and we see it here. So we've canceled a couple so far. We want to see, oh, look at that. We have a negative term as a part of the subtracted term, so they might change this to addition, but let's see if there's a negative 4x cubed or not. So it looks like we have like negative 4x cubed here, negative 4x cubed here, but if, so like they would only change it to addition if this negative was incorporated into it. In other words, had they made it addition using this negative and this negative, that means it would have eliminated the negative from the 4x cubed then made this a positive. But in the option that they have the positive, they still have the negative. So that can't be it. So we should be looking for the double negative in our answer. And then the reason we can eliminate option A is because they have the same term twice. This was meant to be the, actually no, it's, it's Actually, it's pretty close, but they left the 3. So they didn't take the derivative of 3. They just kept it as a 3. Um, so really, again, we're looking for just a minus 4x cubed, not 3 minus 4x cubed. So anyway, A is out of the running here. So we break out the eraser to see that E is our answer. Let's go ahead and do one more. I'll try to not be as, uh, you know, shaky on the process here. Let's jump right into it again. F prime, always starting with A prime, the derivative of the numerator. Now, when you have a negative out in front, what I like to do is go ahead and pair it with A, and B would not have the negative, right? So we kind of pick one to group the negative with. And so usually A prime, or grouping it with A, the numerator, is a good route to take. So derivative of the numerator, a, is negative 3. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So if we have negative 3, negative sine of s, negative 3, negative sine. Let me just make sure they've canceled signs here. Actually, I might leave it like this for now. And so we have negative 3, negative sine of s. And then... Now we want b, so b is s to the seventh, then we want minus, then we want a, so negative three cosine of s, and then we want b prime, the derivative of s to the seventh, so seven s to the sixth, and then we want to divide by s to the seventh squared, or b squared. So now, we want to see s to the seventh squared on the bottom, and all of them do have s to the fourteenth, so no help there. We want to see these two terms paired together, so a negative three, negative sine, and s to the seventh. And so even if they're not right out in front, we may still see a negative three, negative sine, s to the seventh, negative 3, negative sine s to the 7th in our answer. So as long as the signs are still correct, they can be on the right side of the numerator. So keep that in mind. So this first one is looking okay so far. How about the second one? We see, we don't see s to the 7th anywhere. There's no uh, multiple terms on top. They just have one big term in the numerator. So b is out of here. And then... 3s to the 7th sine, okay, okay. So now, in this option, 
where they have this. It's a positive, and they have all the right terms, though. So the positive could also make sense because there's a negative and a negative. Uh, canceling out, making the whole term positive with still having 3s to the 7th and sine of s. So really, that's okay. And then how about the last one? There's also negative 3, negative sine s to the 7th. Let's keep it going. On this side, we have the subtraction. So that's kind of like, like a negative in the mix, right? And then negative 3 cosine times 7s to the 6th. So it's kind of tricky because in some they've multiplied to get 21 and some they have not using this 3 and this 7. So let's start with, is there a cosine with s to the 6th? So option A doesn't even have cosine, so that's out here. And then both of these have s to the 6th and cosine. I think the biggest thing is that this term is negative or minus, you know, whatever. And then this one is positive. There's no minus in the mix. So which one makes more sense? We have, again, the double negative. The whole thing should be positive. So to have a negative or a minus doesn't make sense. So breaking out our eraser, we see that D is our answer. Sorry this video is so long, but hopefully, you know, if you watch the majority of it, there are some good tidbits uh, to learn from in terms of how we eliminate things, how we can narrow down our process of finding the right answer. Like you really like hone in your focus on little pieces by little pieces and, and just kind of eliminate things along the way as you go. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please let me know.